So my uh, same-sex marriage came in the UK about three to four years ago. Has the sky fallen in on the church? That's an interesting question. Has it fallen in? Uh, I would say yes and no. Uh, in some ways, uh, there are certainly some people who say, well, you know, we're carrying on much as uh, as normal because mm -hmm. the legislation that was, was passed, yeah, two years ago, uh, was uh, uh, contained a number of conscience provisions for Anglican clergy. Uh, the trouble is, uh, as you think about the, the surrounding things, because it's not just whether or not you take a marriage service in a church that's the issue. It's how do you care for people with same-sex attraction uh, in your congregation? Uh, how do you care for a couple who come through the door and say, hey, we're, we're same-sex married. What are you, you going to do at that point? So, for instance, at the moment, the position is around the Lord's table uh, that uh, if someone comes in and they, if they are in a same-sex relationship, uh, and you're saying, no, your lifestyle is not right before God, uh, and uh, you're, you're not coming uh, repentantly before him, and you're therefore sort of withholding uh, the, the Lord's Supper from them, then that will get you into trouble. Uh, that will get you into trouble. Uh, and the indications are that the authorities in the Church of England will not back you uh, on it. So that's really very, very significant. So the approach of local churches then is to, to not offer the Lord's Supper? Or how, how, are they, how are they responding, given that the hierarchy's uh, not supportive of their stance? Uh, it's completely untested mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the moment. We don't know uh, what's going to happen. We do know that the problem's there because we've asked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's simply simply one area. There again on the marriage preparation courses that, that people run, uh, that's a, a goods and a service that's provided by, by a church. And again, what happens when you have a, a same-sex couple coming through saying, we want to go through your marriage preparation course? How, how's, that going to, how's that going to work? Now, of course, in, in the way that the law stands at the moment, uh, if you say, no, we're not going to uh, provide that particular service with a small s, not a, not a church service, but service with a small s, yes. it, it's a real problem. Uh, and, of course, uh, some churches are simply keeping their heads down. They will do something like read Genesis 2, uh, but that will be it, uh, rather than actually saying, look, actually, this is what 1 Corinthians 6 says, this is what Romans 1 says, uh, and uh, actually trying to, trying to teach people what God has said uh, about the same-sex issue. So, from that point of view, uh, the, there are big areas just for a local church. It gets worse, of course, if you're thinking about trying to teach in schools. If you're a, a, a minister who's built up a, maybe over years relationship with a local school, whether it's primary or secondary, uh, how, do you, how do you go in there and, and, and kind of cope with uh, the, the questions about same-sex marriage? Uh, it's always going to be a big pastoral question when you know in today's culture that the class you're dealing with, there may well be kids... Uh, who have, in inverted commas, two dads, two mums, what, whatever. Mm. Uh, but how do you teach the truth uh, under those circumstances without burning your bridges uh, and without being denounced as being a homophobic bully? Mm. Uh, so uh, at that point, uh, the fact that there's same-sex marriage, uh, it, people misunderstand this. People think that same-sex marriage in, in the UK was, oh, we're going to... Uh, recognize somebody's freedom. No, it was all about the imposition of a set of values uh, onto the community more broadly. Uh, actually, of course, uh, with marriage uh, and with state-recognized marriage, you're being told, you must recognize this person as married. So same-sex marriage is actually saying to me, uh, I must recognize, I must accept this couple as married at their valuation. Not mine at their valuation. That's impositional uh, and very, very difficult, therefore. Uh, so those are, those are just some of the areas where we actually see uh, not, I'd say, necessarily the sky falling in, but we see actually pockets of problems which are just going to multiply. So you spoke about some protection that's been afforded to the Anglican Church or the Church of England. That's right. What about your independent evangelical churches? I know the FIC you know, network of churches has, has had a resurgence in recent years. Is yep. there a protection afforded for the independent church or the Baptist church or the non-state you know, the non -state church? Not as far as we can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, of course, that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the issues uh, because what's happened with this process of same-sex marriage is that what used to be essentially, as it were, private uh, rather than public 
uh, and in the private sphere you do uh, so to speak what you what you what you like what your conscience dictates as long as you're not going around destroying people uh, and, and harming them uh, has been made public now as soon as the state gives me a defense to something uh, you've made the area in principle justiciable uh, and at that point what the state gives the state can take away so the the mere fact that Anglican clergy have been given protection uh, particularly when other people haven't been well the obvious uh, argument at that point is isn't it unfair for the Anglicans to have this protection and nobody else does so we'll take it away from the Anglicans because we conferred it in the first place mm -hmm. so neither the independents nor the Anglicans are actually sort of terribly chuffed uh, with the state's open inverted commas generosity it's not uh, <laughs> it's not generous mm -hmm.